Hi. So, all right. Today we're going to be talking about Francis Poulenc, and we're going to be talking about. Oh, there we go. We're going to be talking about his sonata for oboe and piano. Um, now, this is one of the most important pieces of uh, oboe literature in the in the standard solo repertoire. Um, it's a piece that's near and dear to my heart. I've performed it many times, um, and, it, and it's always quite fun to perform. You know, because it's so emotional and, and exciting to play. It's very vibrant, very beautifully written for the oboe. But today, we're not only going to look at the music itself, but most importantly uh, for this presentation today, we're going to look at the influences on this piece and, wh and what caused Poulenc to compose it, how he composed it, what made him compose it the way that he did. Um, and, and overall, I think there's really three important things that we're going to be able to discuss today. There's two external factors that influenced him in composing this piece. And then there's one internal factor that we'll get to that's very important as well. So with that in mind, I'm very excited to get to uh, discuss this this piece today and um, and under and understand more more about it. And yeah, very, very exciting. So <clears throat> before we talk about this piece. Of course, it uh, is probably important to discuss Francis Poulenc himself. So um, Francis Poulenc was a French composer and pianist, um, and he had a very distinct musical style that was very witty, elegant, lyrical, and really had a modern sensibility to it. Um, and overall, he was a fusion of neoclassicism and modernism. So what does this mean? During this time in the 20th century, uh, romanticism was on the rise and it was very popular, um, but it was very excessive and very over the top emotional and very virtuosic. So Poulenc decided that he wanted to go back to these more classical forms, you know, Baroque and classical styles and combine them with the music of the day with these more modernist techniques, uh, such as harmonic progressions and the dissonances that were popular at the time. So that's kind of that distinct musical style that he was bringing to the table was a combination of these forms. Um, and that's going to be really important. And we'll get to talking about that more when we talk about Lay Six, which is one of the uh, major factors that we're going to discuss uh, today on influencing him to compose the work. <clears throat> um, but I mean, overall, Poulenc composed in several genres. He composed piano works, choral works, orchestral music, ballets, chamber music, you name it. Um, he, he was often characterized by the contrast that he could make in his music. So he could make music that was very lighthearted and humorous, but also very emotional and sincere. He could make music that was grounded in tonality. He could make music that had modern harmonic progression, dissonances. I mean, he was just a very, very abled uh, composer with a wide range of things that he could do. Um, and he, he kind of quintessentially embodied the French sound at the time. Um, he he, kind of he, you know, bridged the gap um, between romantic music and more avant-garde music. So, uh, yeah, but he was very important after the First World War because he went back to that more clear and simple style, which is what people wanted after the First World War. Again, we'll get to that when we talk about Lay Six as well. Now, this guy, Sergei Prokofiev. So he uh, is other than Lay Six is the other important factor externally that we're going to talk about today. Sergei Prokofiev and Poulenc were great friends, and um, it was his death that was very important uh, in influencing Poulenc to compose a sonata. So let's talk about Prokofiev. He was a Russian composer, pianist, conductor, and overall is widely regarded as one of the major composers of the 20th century. He was very versatile. He wrote in a wide range of genres, including symphonies, concertos, operas, ballets, film scores, you know, chamber music. I mean, anything you could really name, he probably composed in it. Um, his style of music was modernism blended with traditional Russian elements. So what's important about Prokofiev was at this time in Russian music, um, Russian music was heavily regulated, and heavily mandated by the government and by, and by Stalin and his regime. And that's because they understood how influential music could be on the masses and how music could cause people to think a certain way or do certain things. So it was heavily regulated by the Russians. They wanted it to be a certain way every time. And because of this, as I've got here, Prokofiev was a musical bad boy. Um, he was censored many times by the government and um, 
be, because he blended these Russian styles that were accepted by the government with more modern techniques and uh, more Western styles of music at points. Um, so he got he got this kind of bad boy aesthetic because um, you know he often came into came into turmoil with the government. But that was one of the great things about him as a composer, and that we can look at now is you know the style of music that he wrote. Um, but yeah, so great friend to Poulenc, and that and that's the important thing that we're going to look at in a little bit. Now let's look at Lay Six. So. Les Six was a group of French composers who shared similar music aesthetics. So it was formed in the 1920s as a response to the excesses of romanticism. So this is what we talked about before. Composers like Debussy and Ravel composed music that was very wide ranging, very emotional. There's a lot going on. I mean, it was very thick and, and beautiful. But this group of composers uh, after World War One, seeing that um, people wanted more clarity and simplicity, simplicity or they wanted more simple music, uh, sorry. Um, this group of composers decided that they were gonna break away from the romanticism at the time and return to a more neoclassical style, um, <clears throat> but also still embracing um, modern um, harmonies and uh, dissonances and, and, and such that way. So we got the members there, of course, Francis Poulenc, very important member. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, there you have it. Simplicity, clarity, rhythmic vitality, um, are all very important uh, influences in their music and important to Poulenc because we're going to see these same things come forward in the sonata. And that's where the influence of Lay Six really comes in is the compositional style and what Poulenc physically put in musically into uh, this piece. So how do they connect? Poulenc and Prokofiev. So like I said, Poulenc and Prokofiev were very good friends. And at the time that Poulenc, or when, when Poulenc went to compose this piece, P Prokofiev had died. And so the piece is actually dedicated to Prokofiev. But it, it goes much deeper than just the dedication of the piece. You can see his influence in several different ways. So first, the structure of the sonata is unusual. In a typical sonata with three movements, it starts with a fast movement, then a slow movement, and then a fast movement. But Poulenc reverses this and instead does a slow movement, then a fast movement, and then another slow movement. What's important about this is Poulenc wanted to make sure that he had enough time to discuss the emotional sadness that he felt for losing his friend. He wanted to make sure that he had two slow movements to discuss in different ways the pain that he was feeling of losing his friend. And you can see this being true because in the first movement, which is in, in Alehi, these were known to be French styles of composition that were used to mourn um, the death of loved ones, friends, teachers, whatever. But that specific style was chosen in French uh, compositions to represent mourning. And the same thing in the third movement of this piece, the Declaration. Once again, it was a typical typical style used in French compositions to call for mourning. So Poulenc felt the need to switch up the order of the sonata to account for being able to use both of these styles of slow mu slow music to mourn the death of his friend. And then the scherzo, the second movement, imitates Prokofiev's favorite piano style. So the lighthearted nature and the quickness of, of the music is something that Poulenc imagined that Prokofiev would have enjoyed listening to. So all three of these movements have Prokofiev interwoven into them because of um, you know the influence of his death that that had on Poulenc. Now looking at Lay Six, um, once again, let, let's go back to their rejection of romanticism. So because Lay Six wanted to return to simplicity and clarity and, and rejection of the excess of romanticism, their style was more neoclassical, um, but it also had some harmonic um, dissonances and twists that were more modernistic. But the importance here is the simplistic melodies of, of, of this group that you can see in the piece. So if you take a look, I have the first page of the piece over here on the left. And I mean, look at the page. It it's very clear what's happening. I mean, there might be a couple of grace notes, but not really. I mean, we're looking at sixteenth notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, and then I don't have the piano part included in here, but the piano part is very simple as well. And what's beautiful about the piano and the and the oboe in this piece is that they work together. 
uh, as one. It's not the piano playing melodies and the oboe playing melodies and they're fighting against each other and it's building this wide ranging piece. No, the piano and oboe go together. They create, uh, they blend together so well that it, it, it's so simple sounding to the audience and it's so clear where the melody is, where the beats are, um, while still, as you can see, having some harmonic dissonances, some accidentals. Um, so within just this first page, you can see the influence of Lay 6 on Poulenc, the simplicity, clarity, but also using some dissonances and harmonies as well. But as an oboist who's played this piece, it, it lays very well on the oboe. I mean, it's written in a great range for the oboe, right in the middle of the staff. That's where the milkiness and the and the depth of the instrument really comes to light. So the influence of Lay 6 on this composition is the clarity and simplicity of the style because of their um, group choice to reject romanticism. And the final uh, influence that we're going to look at today is more internal for Poulenc. It's, it's the emotional struggles that he was going through at the end of his life. So towards the end of his life, Poulenc made it, you know, quite, quite difficult um, quite difficult thing to come to terms with. He he de he decided he knew that his life was going to end soon, and so he decided that he wanted to try and compose four woodwind sonatas before he died. Now he only got around to making three, and the oboe sonata was actually the last piece he composed before he died. But what what a hard thing to come to terms with, knowing that your life is going to end soon. And what made it worse was at the time his health was declining, his friends, including Prokofiev, were dying. His, his partner had died. So, I mean, it's clear that at this time, Poulenc wasn't in the best um, mental space emotionally. And this is true because of his choice to use the oboe in this composition. Because the oboe is known to be an emotionally provoking instrument that is uh, very similar to the human voice, it's very melancholy sounding, that can explain directly why the emotional turmoil was at the center of influencing this piece. Because the oboe is such an emotionally de deep piece, this had to be um, intentional on pooling to choose this instrument to compose this piece. Jeffrey Burgess is, a, is an oboist and musicologist, very, very well-known musicologist, but he said about the oboe, the reason it had been created was to convey the emotional force of words and to move its listeners. I mean, what, what a beautiful thing to say about an instrument. The, the oboe truly is operatic and it's so similar in its vibrato and inflectional abilities to the human voice that it resonates with emotions so much deeper than many other instruments can. And Poulenc chose this specifically for this piece to discuss the internal emotional turmoil that he was going through. So to wrap this up, um, Lay 6 was a huge influence on Poulenc's compositional styles and his choice of simplicity and clarity of melodies in this piece that can be seen. Um, and, and that's really undeniable because of his membership to the group. The death of Sergei Prokofiev definitely influenced his compositional direction of the sonata because it's dedicated to him. The two of the three movements are slow movements that mourn his loss. And the fast movement um, used styles uh, that Prokofiev enjoyed writing in and listening to. And then finally, because the oboe is an instrument with such emotional depth and is so generally known to be an emotionally provoking instrument, like it's not a coincidence that Poulenc chose to use this instrument for um, the sonata that was discussing such an emotional time in his life. So those are the main influences um, that are super important in, in Poulenc's composition of this piece. Uh, here are some sources that, that I use for this, but I, I really enjoy this piece. I really love this piece. I hope that you uh, love this piece as well. And um, it, it, it's, it, it makes it even better to understand where and why, where Pulling was coming from and why he composed this piece. Because now when you play it, you understand, um, you know, what, what you're doing with this piece and, and what you're trying to convey to the audience. So thank you very much.